Last March, Phillips, I have a mission I want you to lead. Thank you, Sergeant. What's the plan? To neutralize the German U-boats in the North Atlantic. We're losing the war. Hitler is not playing by the rules, so neither are we. We both know that time not very popular with the administration. The reason they find you unattractive is the very reason I find you attractive. If I'm to do this, I'll need my own team. You won't like them. Let's go! They're all... No! Mad. They'll need to be. This is an unsanctioned, unauthorized mission. If we fail, England will be condemned to a lifetime under the German boot. And so I said, that is not a dog. That is my wife! <laughs> it's very good. Abort this mission now. Hello, can't hear you. Please do off. <gasps> What's going on, y'all? It's your boy QP Nerds Rule the World. That was the trailer for the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Joining me to talk things rather ungentlemanly is my pal, Heather Hurt. How are you, Heather? Good, how are you? Tired. <laughs> Tired. Yeah, we actually uh, had a long night, y'all. We actually, uh, as of this recording, screened this uh, the night before. It's dropping on April 19th. And uh, yeah, uh, we have some thoughts if you will, Guy Ritchie, uh, to me, delivers another uh, wild one based on uh, recently um, uh, released files uh, in the British Parliament, I guess. Uh, they they had some classified files uh, that talked about black ops operations that occurred during the World War. And uh, that's where they found formed the basis of this film. Uh, we have Ian Fleming in here, who you all might know from James Bond fame. Um, uh, real life author that created James Bond. He actually worked it with the British military during this time. And uh, we see how some of the tidbits of what they cover in this film laid the foundation for uh, his James Bond 007 franchise, which is really cool. Uh, and when you see those nuggets watching this film, that's kind of sweet. Uh, I enjoy that. Um, but yeah, we have a true story that occurred. Well, there's some fantastical elements because this is a Guy Ritchie film. He put his stamp on it and some other feelers into it. But yes, there was this um, group of men that uh, Britain put together to work on this secret mission. Uh, if you were found by the Britain by the Brits, you would be put in jail. Um, and uh, if you were found by the Nazis, you'd be tortured and killed. And uh, but will you be willing to do this for for God and country? They chose to do it. And essentially, it was to stop uh, ammo and re uh, and 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 uh, gas, oil for them to utilize for their U boats and everything uh, to stop the supply caravan that was down on the coast of Africa, and uh, and and uh, yeah, just shut that down so that way it could help the U.S. forces assist Britain uh, during the World War. Um, so based on true events, um, but Guy Ritchie puts his stamp on it and assembles a, uh, I would say, uh, a league, which was Heather's favorite word last night, a league of superheroes, uh, but where they're real heroes that they're portraying in this uh, to stop these forces. Uh, and so some of the cast, uh, I pulled up IMDb. Uh, again, Guy Ritchie, writer, director, uh, he assembles our Superman, well, former Superman, uh, Henry Cavill as Gus March Phillips, uh, Jack Reacher, uh, aka Alan Richson, uh, he, he plays that on Prime Video, plays Anders Lassen. We have Alex Pettifer playing Jeffrey Appleyard, 
Scene stealer, I, I thought. So uh, the bombshell out of this group of brutes, uh, good looking brutes, by the way, I'll say that they made me question my sexuality. But Isaac Gonzalez brought me right back. Stunning uh, as Marjorie Stewart. We also have Babs Olusanamokin, brutalizing that name, playing Heron. The amazing Carrie Elway's legend, playing Brigadier Gubbins M. Uh, Henry Hero Fiends Tiefen. Never seen this uh, name before, but I think we'll be seeing a lot more of him because he's amazing in this. Plays Henry Hayes, Henry Golding, uh, Freddy Alvarez, uh, and many others. Uh, that's a brief synopsis on the story, the cast. Heather, let me toss it to you. Uh, let's talk about this film a little bit. What did you think uh, when we saw the? I think we did react to this, right? What did you think when we saw this coming, and then and, and, uh, you know now into the film? Uh, I was really, I've been really excited about this movie since before we did the react. Like I think it was when we when we were doing the react, I had to make sure that this was on our list because my husband showed me this. I'm so excited. He's a huge Guy Ritchie fan, like a really really big Guy Ritchie fan, and I'm like second to his to his top tier um and then of course Henry Cavill just having fun because Henry Cavill just has fun is um is something that I love to see uh if you if you put him in this little this little box of his Superman role of him as Clark Kent you're not understanding how much of a nerd Cavill is and how much he just enjoys having fun you can find videos of him just putting together uh you know Warcraft sets and putting together com gaming computers because he's just a nerd like that and so getting to be able to see a Guy Ritchie film with him just obviously having a lot of fun was something that was really exciting to me um and so I've been excited about this movie for for months um I I'm not one of those people unfortunately who can once again sponsors come at us uh, I'm not one of those people that can that can you know spin the doll hairs to travel an hour and a half you know three times a week because I am I am further away people who do the screenings know that there's not that you know I a circumference is not really a, a reasonable way to have screenings I'm just going to say it um but it's I, I can't you know like afford an hour and a half every single day to go to see screenings but this was always going to be one that if I had to drop some serious gas dollars I was going to see this so awesome all right so we saw the film Heather um I was having such a good time I I actually also uh, one of the things I love with films that based on somewhat history, uh, it provokes you to learn more about the history. Um, so I'm very interested in doing that. And just a tidbit, y'all stay tuned. I don't know if it was, it was pre-credits, I believe, right, Heather? We we see some of the pictures of the people that these men portrayed and, and some of what happened after they were a part of this mission that I thought was really cool. Um let, let's talk about the film now and, and 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 that were you aware of this story and and uh the the people involved um i kind of had i i didn't actually learn about it until i was watching something and the based on true events popped up on on the last trailer like i don't think it was actually on the first one that we looked at um, and so what I did is I went in and I looked into, okay, is this one of those movies where it's when they say it's based off of true events that it's kind of sort of based off of like one element of true events. And that's just, that makes it true enough, right? Um, you can, you can watch any, uh, Guillermo del Toro movie and almost all of them say based off true events somewhere. And it's like, you know, you pull out a single, a single scene and that's as much as you're going to get. But uh, I went in and I actually looked up Gus uh, March Phillips and this man is a machine. Like he's, he is just a machine. Um, and he was just, he was willing to do what he needed to do. And if he got to kill a whole bunch of Nazis along that way, he was a hundred percent willing to do it. So it's not that I knew the story. I just, when you do your general lookup about what these facts are based off of, you get, you get his character and it's fascinating. He was, Gus Gus was an, an amazing guy who all of these men deserved the 4,000 awards that all of them got. Um, and of course, when you know of Marjorie Stewart, if you've ever been to the Spy Museum here in the Washington, D.C. area, there is actually a portion of the Spy Museum dedicated to women of World War II. Um, and Marjorie Stewart is one of those that are that is talked about. So if you've ever been there, uh, if you haven't been there, you should go check it out. They just had a new location built. Um, but she is actually in the Spy Museum. So. Love it. Love it. Yeah. I just want to, again, thank you, Heather. And I love that. Go check out the museum. I, I want to really push that um, 
while we're talking about heroes, I was talking about Superman, Henry Cavill, all the blah, blah, blah. There, we're talking about real life heroes in this, even though there's a little bit more fantastical element that Guy Ritchie kind of put into this uh, whole project that these were real heroes. They're amazing. Go learn more. Go to a museum. Educate yourself. And, and I love that this film is going to do that for people. Um, and it's doing that for me. So uh, go check them out. Learn all about that. And uh, yeah, I, I love that. So with that being said, uh, this was a fun ride. I was enjoying myself. Uh, Guy Ritchie fan as well. Shout out to John again. Uh, uh, yeah, he he got good taste. Um, yeah, th this one I think was another great Guy Ritchie uh, piece, and, and such an ensemble cast. And can we talk about that, Heather? And, and I kind of alluded to this earlier. Um, you know, uh, we had some brute men. We had some meat uh, throwing it to wrestling a, 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 as well. We we had some meaty men doing some sweaty crazy wild things smiling the whole time uh and, and like you said it looked like henry cavill was having a blast every member of this cast looked like they were having a blast uh and then the bombshell in there Isaac gonzalez the the lone woman in, in our in our ensemble but she stood out uh in, in every way uh and just held her own uh with these brutes but uh just i want more of this cast and, and that's the biggest thing how i left out out of this film i really enjoyed this ensemble uh, I thought everybody played their part. I thought they all did their thing. They all had their moments. And I just want more. Uh, what did you think about the cast and uh, any highlights within that uh, for you, Heather? Sure. Uh, just like any Guy Ritchie film, no, this movie will not pass the best gel test. I am sorry, guys. Um, uh, you know, I, I want to I like to see my women talking to women, too. But unfortunately, that is not what happened here. This was during a time where there were mostly men doing men things. Uh, so it's unfortunate, but it did happen this way. Um, but uh, when it comes to the cast, they did all look like they were having so much fun. When Isa got her moment, uh, you, she just had a, she, you could tell that she was just giggly and just having so much fun doing it. Um, but I'm going to say Alan Richard, uh, Alan Richardson, Richardson. Yeah, you want to add an er too. there? You want to add an er there? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, he just looked like he was having way too much fun. Um, he had, uh, Henry Cavill definitely had most of the best one liners. Like, he would just give you, you, he, there are scenes where he's just wandering around shooting Nazis. I'm going to repeat that because there's a lot of fun. I, that's my favorite part. Whenever you get to watch some Nazis die, that's always a beautiful thing. Um, but he, he just has great one liners. But Anders, uh, Anders' re reactions after he's just killing a whole bunch of people with his bare hands is just gorgeous. I, I love it. He just, <laughs> it's, just, it's so much fun it's 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 one of those movies that's kind of making light of a very serious situation that was happening but these were men doing what they needed to do to get where they what they to get what needed to be done done and they were doing it in their own way and, and they were doing it in a little bit more of a guy Ritchie way but they were getting it done and it had some fun quirks to it you know it, it, it was great the cast seemed like they had a lot of fun and one of the big things I want to shout out is uh we have to remember that the Holocaust wasn't just, and I, I am of Jewish heritage, so I feel very confident, co uh, comfortable saying this. So if you get mad, get mad at me knowing that I understand that this is something that happened to my heritage. I had family, direct family that died. So it was one of those where you have to, you have to remember it was not just Jews. It was people of color. It was the disabled. It was the, uh, was those in the LGBTQIA community. They tried to completely um, this is this message goes straight to you, J.K. Rowling. The Nazis tried to completely destroy all records of transgenderness, which was started in Germany by a Jewish doctor. That happened during the Holocaust. Okay, okay, honey, we get we get we get there. So one thing that was really great about this movie is it kind of expanded on the fact that there were not just Jews affected by this. There were um, there were soldiers of of several nations, and there were people of color that were tortured and killed and just brutally taken away from their families. Um, so that was something that I really loved because you had characters kind of across the range um, in how they have been impacted, how they were impacted by the Nazis. That was something I loved that you had the opportunity to see in this film. Thank you for that, Heather. Actually, that was another question I had, and you kind of answered it in some way. I was curious um, because there was some great moments, uh, especially with Isaac Gonzalez's character when she was interacting with the Nazi bad guy that leads uh, the group in this town or whatever that they're at, um, where it got really quiet. 
and there is a concentration on certain moments on her dialect, uh, which, you know, I don't want to, you know, spoil anything within the film, but just, you know, uh, where he was trying to figure out whether, you know, if she was, um, uh, if she was German or or Jewish or you know, you know what I'm talking about that particular scene, um, but just how that affected you and, and and just that just how that how all kind of played out within the story elements of the film. Uh, how how profound was that for you and the the moments in in speaking of the of the of uh, you know uh, what was occurring and, and the Jewish and the, the Jews and the Nazis and all that stuff. Genocide is genocide. I'm going to say that very, very plainly. And um, we have to accept that certain historical elements happened. Um, was that a very keen way? Uh, there were, I'm going to say this, there are brilliant people out there who can recognize certain things. And um, there was an opportunity that gave him the upper hand in a situation that was unfortunate. Uh, however, she took it She took it with, uh, with all the grace and virtue of a true vixen. Um, so one of it, it's, when it comes to those in power taking advantage and using it as a genocide, as a genocide tactic, I'm going to say this very plainly, but without getting us in too much trouble, you are, you get what you get and you need to be careful of what you do. And it's really great to see those who, who, um, who take part in genocide get their comeuppance. So when I say, now, now to go back to the movie specifically, when I say I like to watch Nazis get killed, I love it. It's a great day in my, in my, you know, it's a lot of fun. I feel that. Yeah, man. I, I thought they really portrayed that well. And I liked that nuance uh, mm -hmm. in there. That was really well done. Bravo to Guy Ritchie and the team uh, that put this together. Um, I, I also want to just, again, you mentioned Henry Cavill. Uh, just, I wonder that uh, the, the, if he got a note or if this was himself, uh, when he was killing, enjoying killing Nazis, the tongue stick out. Uh, that to me was like the Jordan effect. You know, Michael Jordan used to stick his tongue out when he was scoring on cats. Here we have Cavill's uh, Nazi hunter just shooting and, and sticking the tongue out. That was brilliant. That was awesome. And uh, Alan Richson, man, and I want to say Richardson, like you were saying, uh, who's our Jack Reacher. I, I will admit it. I never watched the new Jack Reacher with him on Prime Video, but now uh, this was really actually Think about it. This is really my first time really watching Alan Richardson on the screen. I'm not a fan. This guy was brilliant. Uh, again, both of them looked like they were having fun. Uh, this was just good times. This was a, just a, a fun movie. But I'm now curious. I, I got to throw it back to you, Heather. You did have some reservations. Um, I'm just going to be spoke, speaking glowing, glowingly on this film. I can't wait to watch it again. I think it was lit. I want a part two. I, I love this ensemble. But you had some 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 uh, little bit of a uh some 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 issues and i want to throw that in there before we get up out of here i don't want to call them issues i want to call okay. them um i want to call them unexpected there are there are elements that were unexpected to me especially from a guy from a guy ritchie movie um it's one of those where you go into a guy ritchie movie expecting something between historical inaccuracy and um and like lots of explosions just just lots of action and lots of explosions like you got this weird mix of historical film and Michael Bay like you got that mixed up that that's that's Guy Ritchie um but that's not what this is um so what you have are you have very high impact moments that Guy Ritchie made the most of in between long drawn out this is actually what would have happened situations like I, I don't we don't we never like to spoil anything but to just to be very honest when you're on a boat for days, there's just nothing to do. Um, that's just some, that is just a part of being on a boat for days. Uh, so that's, so when it comes down to, is this the moment to moment action scene of a Guy Ritchie film? It's not, but it's also a lot more of a historical retelling than, than Ritchie has really given us in the past. I'm not saying that he's never done this, but he, this is just a little bit more of a retelling in a, in a non-traditionally Guy Ritchie kind of way. So when I when I say I have reservations, it's more like if you're going into a film, if you want to go into this film thinking this is going to be strictly a Guy Ritchie smash him, smash him up, bloody as hell movie, that's not what you're going to get here. You're, you're really not going to get that. Um, you are going to get a high, I would say a high action 
historical film. Okay. Um, there, there, there are great moments where where the action could be was very, very Guy Ritchie. But you just have to be patient. There are times that you just got to be patient. I'm not saying it's bad. It's yeah, bad. yeah, not bad at all. I I see your point. Guy Ritchie just doing something different. To be mm -hmm. honest, yeah. I see that. Okay. I don't disagree with that at all. This was a di very different Guy Ritchie film of past Guy Ritchie films that I've enjoyed. And and um, yeah, different take, but solid and understandable with the material. So yeah. Okay. I was like, hold on, Heather. I enjoyed this film. What are you talking about? So I, I would agree with those uh, uh, points because if you are a super Guy Ritchie fan, this is a different, but I think, yeah, um, I, I guess because I'm older, like we know that Everybody do, does something different, different projects, but new generation, know oh, they want something like the same all the time from wh whatever creator that they really love. So that is a very important point to, to, to note that this might not be what you normally get, but it's still your, the stuff you like, it's, 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 it's chocolate, but this one is chocolate with peanuts or chocolate with caramel, whatever you want to. Unless you have allergies. Don't go, don't <laughs> yeah. Don't eat that. yeah. Okay. If you have allergies, so let's caramel, <laughs> but fun ride. I, Man, I just wish my my one thing with this is this: uh, can we get more of the missions? Can can they dive into history and find out more of these classified files of the of them assembling this team? Because I'm sure there's other missions that they did, you know, in history. Or can they just let Guy Ritchie do his own thing? Hey, take this concept, uh, previously based on true events, but now we're having fun with this ensemble because man, was this ensemble brilliant! I kudos to the casting directors, everybody on this. Um, I love this. Song. I want to see them together. If not on this, uh, other films. Uh, I thought they all had fun, and I'd love to see them have fun together again. Um, I love this film. Fun film. Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, y'all. Um, those are our thoughts. Uh, if you want to talk with me and Heather uh, all about this film, hit us up in the comments below. Uh, follow, like, subscribe, all the things. Uh, any other last words, Heather? Uh, I, I think I forgot to throw it back to you one more time. No, no, yeah, have fun. Try and see it in IMAX if you can. We didn't get to see it in IMAX. I don't know if it actually was shot in IMAX. That's the question too. I was thinking the same thing after we said that yesterday. I was like looking on different things when I was putting my promos together. And I don't know. I think I saw D-Box, whatever that is. There's like something Dolby Digital. Oh, so it could have been in Dolby. It could be in Dolby Surround, which would make sense because there's lots of explosions. Boom. <laughs> so if, see it in the best whenever you see a movie if you're going to put the money down because this is a luxury this is an opportunity for you to go out and enjoy it um, if you can try and see it in the best format as you can because this was clearly one of the movies I feel like we were kind of stepped down in a regular theater just, just personally so if there is a Dolby option go check it out in Dolby completely agree yeah these are those films you want to see on the big screen in loud and loud sounds, uh, you know, I, I'm actually for they had the screen, but but definitely digital, Dolby Digital, you know, just see it in the best way you can because it's a fun ride. This is what we go to see movies for. All right, y'all, the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, your boy Kuya P. And why am I trying to like speak in a slight British accent? Uh, <laughs> those are our thoughts. Oh, that's called <laughs> quite, quite enjoyed this one. Quite enjoyed this one. <laughs> Until next time, Heather, your boy Kuya P. We out. <laughs>there you go me your boy heather uh ministry me, me and you, you know what let's do that hey what's up what's up initial thoughts coming out of the press screening for the ministry of ungentlemanly warfare i was honestly thinking that it might be a slightly different film than it turned out to be I'm not saying that's a bad thing but i will say that i was kind of 
impressed slash unimpressed, especially for a Guy Ritchie movie. And if you know Guy Ritchie movies, you know why. Okay, we're going to get into that in our full review. I'm curious what she's thinking, but I had a lit time, yo. I'll just say that. Guy Ritchie, um, this cast, this ensemble, you know, Henry Cavill, our, our Superman, but... Uh, the rest of this cast are straight up superheroes. Adam Richardson, I've been trying to think what superhero he could be. Uh, he, he needs to be a superhero, but this entire cast was amazing. Uh, we're going to have to have a full conversation about this, but mm-hmm. get your tickets. And if you can see it in IMAX, go see it in IMAX. Uh, this is a, that it's meant for that. Check it out. Your boy QP, Heather, we out. 